Okay, there's this woman named Romana Didulo, or Romana Didulo, I think. She's a cult leader from Canada. She calls herself the Queen of Canada, Her Royal Majesty. Hello, Canada. I'm Romana Didulo. I'm the founder and leader of Canada First. As of... Oh, she was the founder of the Canada First Party. February yeah. this year, 2021, I am the head of state and commander-in-chief of Canada, the Republic. When she lost her election, I guess she just straight up snapped. Anyway, I wanted to listen to this, like, this documentary about her. This isn't part one. If you didn't see the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll give context if it's missing. And while we watch, we're going to play some uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I, I'll cut any spoiler spoilers. I'll blur it or whatever, so you don't have to worry about that. On a warm summer day in August of 2022, a group of Romana Didalo's followers gathered here in front of police headquarters in Peterborough, Ontario. Those who have sardines, Thank you all think so. Thank Thank you. sardines. Didalo was there too, handing out snacks. It seemed peaceful enough at first. Group members were there to arrest Peterborough police officers. Oh yeah, I talked about this at the very beginning originally. I have like, I have footage of them being like, um, I have footage of the entire interaction from beginning to end, including when Frank here, guy in the camo, and including when he was like captured by the police. They were not happy that he did that to them, like scared the shit out of them. You know, they weren't happy about it. Um, and they, they made that known. They manhandled Frank, if you will. And you know, I don't agree with what Frank was doing. I think that's dumb as dog shit. What is wrong with you, Frank? Like, seriously? But that doesn't, like... I don't know. I, I feel like that doesn't... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? That doesn't negate his rights as a human being. He still has human being rights, doesn't he? And it's... I don't know. It's just... It's kind of sad that they treated him so poorly. Threw him on the ground, and it was ugly. It was just a big, ugly thing. Their crime? Enforcing COVID restrictions. This is Didalo supporter Frank Curtin. We are here today to make a citizen's arrest against the members of the Peterborough Police Department for their involvement in the crimes against humanity. It didn't go well. No, it did not. These are involved in the COVID crime and we're placing these all under arrest. No, 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 no. Hey, oh! Yeah, this is the video I was talking about. Hey! I suggest you stand down! Stand down, please! Stand down! Stand down! Stand down! You guys are under arrest, citizens. Stand down! Stand down! Six protesters were charged. Two, including Frank Curtin. That's how it ended, man. I'm really sorry it ended that way. I, you know, these people desperately needed help. Like, currently, they need help. They're just unglued from reality, and they're a danger to themselves and others at this point. And, like, you know, at, at a certain point, what are you supposed to do, you know? What are the police supposed to do? Are they supposed to, like, just let these people continue to run rampant and, and threaten them and, and all this stuff? I don't... I mean, they shouldn't be hurting them or attacking them or whatever the way that they did certainly but at a certain point i feel that that people need to like i feel like at a certain point people need to understand that something's going to be done something has to be done about these people leading up to that moment uh there was a guy that like ran into the police station it, he was in this car right here and he left it running and he just bolted into the police station, into this door. And they ran around to the other door. They ran around here and they started asking questions. By the way, this woman on the right here, this is Queen Romana's like, uh, I don't know, press secretary or whatever. Hang on, let me see if I have a video of her. I should. Why, you think COVID's real? Do you? Yeah. Do you? Well, well, my, well, my boss got a million bucks to start making COVID hand sanitizer bottles. Before you know, creating like... Of course, COVID only exists to make money for people, right? Like hand sanitizer bottles 
weren't being produced on mass. They weren't producing enough. So this company, they wanted to produce more hand sanitizer bottles. So, of course, they paid. Uh, they paid what big pharma to like lie and claim there was a pandemic. Totally, totally, absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he knew he was getting it long before COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bro, just like come back to reality with everybody else, please. I'm begging you. Yeah, he wears red high heel shoes down the main street with the elite. Yeah, red high heel shoes are like a, a not even a dog whistle. Well, I, yeah, I guess it's a dog whistle. It's a dog whistle for QAnon. They believe that it's a sign that somebody is like um, taking advantage of children. You know what red high heel shoes mean? Pedophilia. Yeah. I mean, it's complete nonsense, obviously. I'm sure I don't even need to say that, but... I'll say it anyway. And I caught him. And then I came after your Chief Gilbert. You know, the one you haven't seen in about eight months, that one? I know you guys talk that you see him all the time. Most of the Dude, I have no idea what he's even talking. Chief Gilbert? Like, what? He thinks Chief Gilbert is, like, hiding or something? Officers have asked, except for a couple. A couple are honest people. They told me... I D does he think that Chief Gilbert has, like, been replaced by a clone or something? Is that what it is? I mean, that's I, I'm not saying that flippantly like they really believe that type of thing. Uh, these people that we're listening to right now. The the whole clone thing and everything, it's not a joke. It's real. Most of the officers I've asked, except for a couple, a couple are honest people. They told me I haven't seen them in a long time. Is that true? When, when did you see him last? He's you guys gone. need to think about what you're doing. We're not here to We're, hurt you. Do your due diligence. The truth is coming. The military will be here to pick you up. The moment. The military will be here to pick you up. You catch what he just said? The military will be here to pick you up. The moment we detain you. The moment we detain you. Wait, why are we waiting for the military to come along and... I mean, I'm sorry. Wait, why is the military waiting for these guys to detain the cops? Is it like some twisted test of loyalty or something? Well, these people showed up, so, like, how, what more do you need to see as far as a test of loyalty goes? What the hell is this? Like, what is all of it? Like, what's happening? How did she weasel these people into doing this? This is so sad, seriously. So uh, you need to take some time, think about it like anybody else you know you know just come to your senses and realize it's not the way to go we're only here because we got dead and injured people we don't see you standing up we've got dead and injured people who where what people are you talking about do your job yeah they felt that one right they there. There. we're not leaving this car absolutely Okay, the They're not leaving the car. It's running. The car is just going to run out of gas. That's really not good for the car at all to run out of gas like that. My God, dude. Um, get help, guys, please. Honestly, I'm begging you. This whole event was set up by Ramana Dudula. She told them that she wanted them to show up and do a citizen's arrest of the people, like of the cops at this police station. So what happened? Her, you know, her loyal followers showed up. And then Ramana Dudulo showed up and she said, oh yeah, the uh, military's on its way. As soon as you take custody of the police here or whatever... The military is going to take custody from you and, and all of that. And Ramana showed up in her Queen Ramana camper, QR1 or whatever it is. And uh, her press secretary, this woman on the left here, came out and talked to Frank. Hello there. Hello, hello everyone. This is Darlene Andy on behalf of We the People, uh, the press secretary for Her Royal Majesty Queen Romana. And uh, I have the great fortune of being in Peterborough, Ontario with Frank. 
and uh, Frank, we're in front of the police station, so do you mind uh, sharing with us uh, what's going on here right now? Well, uh, we're in front of the Peterborough Police Station. Um, we tried to stop all COVID crimes last year with a cease and desist order on June 6th. Which means he sent a letter to the, what, the police station, I guess, in the area and said cease and desist giving vaccines to anybody. No more COVID crimes, quote unquote. This is insane. That was endorsed by U.S. Special Force Military. Um, today, uh, we've put the police station on notice many times over the last year that warning them to stop and they've continued to participate. We are here to. I think they were clapping because Romana Dedulo stepped out of her little car. I, I, I'm not even sure. I mean, the, she was already there. The press secretary is out here doing interviews with people like Frank. So day to make a citizen's arrest against the members of the Peterborough Police Department for their involvement in the crimes against humanity. Those are serious. Those are serious they're, charges. They're very right? serious oh. charges. And uh, they get help, brother. Look, and if you notice, He's got like a little feather in his hat, like in the back, and it's sticking straight up as though he's like uh, some kind of like an indigenous, um, what do you call it? It's like an indigenous practice. Is that fake or is that real? Is that like part of his culture or what? I am from the Mohegan tribe originally. M-O-H-E-G-A-N, not to be confused with Mohican with a C. And we don't do the feathers sticking up. We do the feathers downward. Um, it's just kind of the style difference. So I don't know if this guy knows what he's doing. I don't know if he's just like making this up or, or whatever. But look here. See? Hang on. Right, right there. See? Why does he have that? I believe the feather sticking straight up is like a sign of war. Some to that effect. Again, my tribe didn't do that, so my birth certificate says I'm one half Native American, but I don't think that's accurate. I think it's less than that. Um, but you know, we, my, my grandma and my mom are both registered members of the tribe and everything. I never went through the process of becoming a member of the tribe. It's not that hard. I could just get my grandma to sign me on if I wanted and. I'd be good to go, but I guess, I guess that's all I wanted to say about it. I just think it's interesting that he has that feather. And uh, they, they need to be looked at very seriously. That's why we're here today. Uh, unfortunately, the, because the police know we were coming today, they've hidden inside the middle of the building and locked all the doors. So we are going to... Well, they've hidden inside the building and locked all the doors because they know that there is a literal cult outside coming to get them patient just like they are a patient with anybody that's held up in their home by the police we are going to wait them out uh, at some point in time they're going to have to leave so when that time comes we are going to make a citizen's arrest on the individual that will try to leave you know honestly in my opinion the um what do you call it like the rcmp is that who it would be i'm not sure the federal government in canada should have been helping out they should have been there in this situation contributing in some serious way they should have like shown up and done the arrests of these people themselves it, this shouldn't be a situation where these people are hiding in the building like this this is not really acceptable to me Someone dropped the ball, in my opinion. And hopefully, between now and then, they may come to their senses and come to the door. At least to have the conversation with the people. They owe it to the people. Look, these people didn't want to have a conversation. These people wanted to do something psychotic. Very different. I noticed that there's citizens that are coming here that want police service that are being turned away. Yeah, obviously, because they don't actually need or want service from the police. It's obviously like a ploy being set up by Frank here. Really? My God, dude, these people are just unglued from reality, honestly. 
uh, simply because they have the door lock and right now they're not answering their phone. Uh, so obviously they, they know the position that they're in. If they were innocent in this crime, they would have answered the door and they would speak to the people. Really? You think if they were innocent, they'd open the door and, and they'd speak to you? They know that there are literal nutcases out there waiting for them to open up to do something crazy to them, okay? No, it's not a matter of if they were willing or if they were honest and they weren't guilty in this whole thing, then they just opened the door. It's not like that. Get a grip, Frank. God. Because we, the people, are here to speak to them specifically, and they are hiding right now. So we're not going anywhere. We are going to be peaceful, and we are going to bring in the military today and hand the members of our police department over to the military. Why didn't the military just come do it themselves? I don't understand. So, Frank, I have a couple questions for you. So, first of all, I want to thank you on behalf of We the People uh, in the Kingdom of Canada. Like, why do they keep keep saying we the people in this scenario? Honestly, we the people was the first um, the, the first line in what was it? The Declaration of Independence. Is that right? It's been a while since I've read the founding documents. What does Canada have to do with that? Do you know what ha you know how Canada was formed? Do you know why there are so many French speaking people in Canada? Back during the Revolutionary War, England was fighting the United States, and the US convinced France to get involved, begged them to get involved and help fight against the the British. And uh, France agreed because they were two world powers that were warring with each other, and they thought, well, if the United States is on our side and they become their own fighting force, and, and they, you know, to be fair, they do, like the United States at the time, they did have, like, a lot of um, uh, crops that could be traded, things like that. So France said, all right, we'll, uh, we'll trade and we'll, we'll take their side. For the record, France could have taken Britain's side in the the whole situation if they had chosen to instead. But France chose to take the side of the United States in the Revolutionary War. Anyway, leading up to the war, the Founding Fathers held something called a Continental Congress, I, I think is what it was called. And... It was uh, they wrote a letter called the Olive Branch Accords. They wrote that letter to the uh, King of England, King George, basically asking him to work with them, talk to them, see if we can figure things out. You know, we don't like begging you to chill out and work with us on this situation. And they found out that King George said. Like, he didn't even read it. King George didn't even read the Olive Branch Accords. He had his lower guy read the Olive Branch Accords and throw it out on his behalf. And that was just a slap in the face. And that's when the founders of the U.S. were like, okay, you know what? If that's what you want to do, we're going to find a way to wage war against you then instead. And that's what happened. They got the French on board, and the French worked with us in the United States against the British, so on and so forth. The rest is ancient history. Well, after the war, there were British over here, British troops. There had to, there had to be British troops here because they were fighting. After the war, where do you think the British troops went? They left the United States. They went north. They went to Canada. And so did the French. A lot of people to get out of U.S. territory went to Canada. Eventually, like, we had a lot of conflict with Canada. Canada burned down the White House at one point. Seriously. They were, like, one of the, the only forces to ever burn down the White House or something like that. I don't remember. But they burned down the White House, Canada did, at one time. And now we have, like, people who are pretending to be like Canadian indigenous or whatever, who are actually Filipino. <laughs> and, and they're like, they're claiming to, uh, 
like and they keep using the term we the people and stuff like what <laughs> like the number of ridiculous nonsensical contradictions in the claims being made are, are like impossible to count it's embarrassingly painful it's so ridiculous it's sad to listen to these people say the shit that they say seriously it's a joke anyway I'm around the world for your courage and uh, is there anything that you can share with uh, others that may be open to you know creating in their own community and uh, going to speak with the police uh, officers and what they need to do to make sure that we the people are represented dude I don't know what somebody's yelling in the background they keep yelling working with like 16 times why are they yelling working with? We heard you the first time. Working with. Yes. Okay. With uh, others that may be open to, you know, creating in their own community and uh, going to speak with the police. You hear him there again? Uh, he's yelling. Working with. Okay. Working with who? Working with what? What are you talking about? It was the British, August 1814. Is that when the White House was burned down? Okay. Uh, uh, by the by, Savannah Krakowski. Wait, Krakowski. Krakaukas, thank you for the membership. Don't forget, check out my book. It's pinned. All right, guys? owenmorgan.com slash book. It's an Etsy shop. Check it out. I'll shout out your name on YouTube and Twitch. Shout, shout out your name here. If you guys, uh, just first names only in case you don't want to be doxxed or something. If you guys want to buy the book, I would appreciate that very much. It's on its way out right now. I am having it produced as we speak. And I'm so excited to get it pushed out. God, I cannot wait until this book is done. My editor is working on it as we speak. She'll be done today. So anyway, super excited. Anyway, let's continue listening to this guy yell working with. Speak with the police uh, officers and what they need to do to make sure that we the people are represented. Well, um... Dude, how many working withs is that? How many times has he said that term, working with, so far? What, what we really need to do as a group is be united together. Uh, if you're tired of looking at, watch, or if you're tired of watching the way people are living, you need to stand up, stand with the people. Take some time, educate yourself about our new commander in chief. Educate yourself about our new commander in chief, he says. Oh my God. Of the country, Queen Ramona Didio. Educate yourself. Don't use Google. Dude, does, does Canada even call their leader the commander in chief? Is that a thing that Canada does? Don't use Google. Use Telegram. Telegram's way more trustworthy. Oh my God, guys. Get a grip on reality. I'm begging you, please. This is insane. Anyway, I thought, once again, commander-in-chief is an American thing. And, by the way, QAnon started in America. Why are these people, like, referring to we the people and commander-in-chief and all that junk? This is bizarre. Like, I don't understand. Everything is so Americanized and America-centric in this Ramana Didulo cult. The hell? Because Google has already slanted her. Uh, the mainstream media slanted me. Great. Okay. So where do we go then, Frank? Tell me where we look. The moment that I served Chief Gilbert, they, they attacked me. And I. Oh, he says he served Chief Gilbert. He served him with a warrant for his arrest. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my God, dude. These people. These people, honestly, they need help. In all seriousness. How do you tell the difference between this and mental illness? They're indistinguishable. They're the same thing. Except one can be cured with Seroquel. You know, the um, delusional beliefs or whatever. And the other can't. The other, you have to be talked out of. That makes it disturbing in my mind somebody can recognize that they're ill that they're mentally ill and they need help these people have to be talked into it they have to be persuaded and shown how mentally ill they are 
the, like it can't be fixed with medicine. It's disturbing stuff, man, for real. It's really only trying to stop what I thought was a crime. And I was attacked and I was slandered, ridiculed. And I'm just a simple man. I, I was trying to stop what I thought was a crime, he says. Well, I guess it wasn't a crime, was it? I mean, based on what he's saying here, seems to me like he realizes now that it, it was not a crime. And that it was probably a mistake to, quote-unquote, serve Chief Gilbert or whatever. Get a grip, Frank. Please, I'm begging you, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I recognize that this was a crime early. I was in a position where I recognize my boss got a million dollars from the government to start making hand sanitizer bottles. Yeah, hand sanitizer bottles are necessary for a pandemic. Are you kidding me? You think there's some conspiracy here to, like, get people to whatever? Like, what the hell is going through this dude's head? Seriously. And the global news told our community and Ontario that they were, that our, excuse me, that our company was expanding our bottle making business. We never had any bottle making machine to expand. That was a complete lie. And I know because I worked there for 33 years that this wasn't a pandemic. This was a plandemic. Plandemic. Totally, totally. It was a plandemic. By the way, Plandemic, if you don't know, is a movie that was um, produced on... I don't even know who produced it. I don't remember. But it was just a nonsensical garbage, of course. I'm sure I don't even need to say that. But it was a movie... And it was played for churches across the country, and it's just, like, insane. They would get the church together and do, like, pizza parties, and they would pay Pizza Hut to put this DVD in on their little TV so they could all watch Plandemic together. I debunked Plandemic, the whole movie. We went through the whole thing, if you guys want to see it. It's pretty fascinating. I mean, it's all... Fabricated nonsense, of course. It's the the premise is they're claiming that there's some kind of secret plan to like make the pandemic a reality to like hurt people or whatever. Like, guys, please come back to reality. And uh, I served my boss, and I had to quit. And I came. He served his boss, I guess. He's saying he served him with papers and then quit, like served him with like a citizen's arrest or something and then quit. Is that right? Here and I served the police station. And since then, I haven't worked. I've been investigating the police station. Since then, I haven't worked. He said, well, what have you been doing, Frank? How are you making money? How are you surviving? And I have accumulated more than enough evidence to bring these suspects to trial so we the people can have some closure and get peace back in this community. Well, I would love to know how Frank is surviving without working right now. Like what? Wow, Frank, that is unbelievable. And I wanted to also uh, ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind. So uh, I know earlier today that you came aboard uh, QR, what's known as QR1, and yeah. actually had a conversation with yeah. Queen Romana and people. Oh, God, it's so cringy. Yeah, if you didn't see that one, I have, like, all of these clips. Here's another cringy thing they do. Didulo, like, got on Telegram and posted these pictures of like police following their vans or whatever I, I mean they weren't doing anything they were just like following alongside them and she po uh, in her post she said rcmp escort thank you she claimed that the feds in canada were supporting her the queen by giving her an escort this is insane probably going to want to know, were you aware that Queen Roman and the Peace and Prosperity Mobile Government were on their way to see you? Pre Peace and Prosperity Mobile Government? That's, uh, I guess that's like Romana Didulo's, uh, or Didulo's, like um, uh, RV. It goes from place to place, the RV does. And, God, it's just so cringy and sad.
I feel so bad for these people that they're so brainwashed into this. They're so stuck in this, you know? Like, they cannot get their brains out of it. I, up until this morning, I, it's a funny... Yeah. What, what, what was that? Did he think that the military was rolling up or something? To do, like, the citizen's arrest or to do the arrest in his place or, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody's getting in. Um, yes, uh, I, as a matter of fact, I, I had a friend with me that was coming today. And he mentioned, you know, I haven't seen, Queen Ramona has been in Nova Scotia for a few days. I haven't really seen any information about her. Interesting. I noticed that he calls her Qu Queen Romana. Romana. That's how I pronounce it. Um, but she pronounces it Romana Didulo. So I don't know. I, I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but it just doesn't really roll off the tongue properly in an English for an English speaker. Um, so I don't know. Tell me what you think. Should I say Romana Didulo the way it's comfortable or Romana Didulo? the way that it it's apparently supposed to be pronounced. So what'd you think? And I thought, you know what, you're right. The only thing I've seen is she's showing, every, we're watching the training of all the people. So what would that mean? That would mean that they're probably driving straight back to here. And I no sooner said that, and I got a text saying, we'll see you here at one o'clock. And I laughed so hard, I couldn't even tell, I couldn't tell my friend that they were coming because I was laughing, because it was just the timing of it, just divine timing. It was beautiful. Just divine timing. Ramana was driving past this town. And he says it was divine timing because he lives in that town. Wow, dude. Okay. Cool. I, I was so excited. It's all about divine timing. Yes, exactly. And, and you know, after investigating for a year, um, you know, everything I've done, I've done for humanity. And I know... Totally, totally. He's done it for humanity. Just the stuff that I've done. Um, I only have to go halfway and somebody meets me halfway and, and, and helps me finish it off. Honestly, honestly, that's that's how it works a lot of the time. You, you get something started, others will join in um, more often than not. Not always, but a lot of the time people will pitch in and, and help if they see you doing something uh, valuable. So It's just the way it's been. And I love it. And, you know, I'm going to bring peace back to this community one way or another. And we're going to do it peacefully and fairly. And everybody deserves the right to have a fair trial. But everybody's free will will be on trial. Everyone's free will needs to be on trial because we need closure. We, we need peace back in our community. We sure do. Well, Frank, thank you so much on behalf of We the People for your service. On behalf of we the people. Again, like, why do they keep saying we the people? I don't understand. It's such a weird thing for them to say of all people. Like, weren't they, like, <laughs> originally, weren't the Canadians, like, oppositional to Americans? What an absolutely odd thing for a Canadian cult to say your courage and uh, I guess we're gonna wait it out and see what happens yeah and, well uh, time and pressure breaks, yes. it breaks everything down yes and is it wonderful that uh, her royal majesty and the peace and prosperity HRM for sure well, government team came here to it was sit fantastic. in front of, in front of the police station yeah. with you as well so. yeah and you uh, and you, you come straight like that there is you know and nobody knew you were coming you know, right. nobody knew you were coming except for a few of us with a little bit of intuition. That's about it. Okay. And it's wonderful. Again, I don't know why he has this feather in his hat here, but it's just like, it's embarrassing, bro. Please don't do this. So happy you're here. All right. Well, thank you so much, Frank. And uh, I'm going to be interviewing some of the We the People that have uh, joined the cause here. Thank so you. thank you again. Thank and we may be speaking to you again very soon. Lots of love, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, folks. Again, that is Frank. And uh, more to come, everyone, on behalf of Darlene Andy's press secretary for We the People in the Kingdom of Canada. It is my honor and pleasure is appointed by Her Royal Majesty Queen Romana. Romana, Romana, and he and Frank calls her Romana.
Romana Romana. I'm not sure like which is correct. To you very soon. Great crowd here, and uh, we're going to see what happens with the police station at Peterborough, Ontario. Now, I don't know how, like, which part we're in, how long you've been watching, but in this documentary on, on it, this is how it ended right here. Perfect picture. Perfect freeze frame. That's Frank on the ground. It didn't end well. They didn't treat Frank well. And that's really sad. I'm sorry for Frank that he had to go through that. Um, next time, don't literally threaten police and tell them that you're going to do some psychotic shit to them if they don't do blah, 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 blah. don't do this or don't do that or whatever next time don't threaten people and in this won't happen not that that's an excuse like even the most heinous attackers and murderers or whatever's deserve their day in court and they don't deserve to be treated badly by police no matter what full stop but you know, Frank was practically asking for it in this case. It's just it's just sad, man. It's just sad. All of it is sad. Anyway, that's where we left off. Yeah, Frank was uh, trying to do a citizen's arrest, and the police finally got the upper hand and ended up... Um, I, like, I don't know how else to say it. They were, like, manhandling Frank, and honestly, I feel bad for him. Th this is unacceptable, truthfully, in my opinion. For assaulting police... The fake queen remained inside her RV the entire time, live streaming to her followers. So the uh, triangular craft, military craft, showed up, and that's the special forces. No, my God, dude, it's so sad. She had to make up an excuse for why the military never showed up. She claimed that they did. This is so sad, dude. Some of this stuff I, di I didn't have. I don't have some of these videos. This is interesting. Right above the uh, Peterborough police station. Professor Christine Sarteski from Chatham University in Pittsburgh watched events unfold. She claims the group had darker plans that day. And the plan was to actually kidnap the police, put them on trial, and then execute them. Yes, yes, absolutely. That was the plan, for sure. Who is this person? Is she like a cult expert or something? Yeah, that was definitely the plan. She speaks very violently towards, you know, large groups of people, healthcare workers, anyone who was involved in the pandemic in any way with masking efforts, vaccines. For each child that you have harmed, you will receive not one, but two bullets on your forehead. I think the danger a lot. Yeah, she's really violent in her rhetoric. We saw that earlier, that, that, that thing that she said there. We saw that in the very beginning of this. She's definitely violent in all of her rhetoric. And like I said, she has actually instructed her followers to do it. Like, take up arms. It's time. Go kill the mayor. Go whatever. Do this, do that. She's instructed them to do that. And they just posted a bunch of pictures of their guns and stuff. There was no real, like, there wasn't any actual action to speak of. Uh, surprisingly, honestly. I would have expected there to be some, some degree of action, but eyes in how active her followers are and this is evidenced by what we saw at peterborough so we're going to place you under arrest with the rest of them over there get out these types of groups don't get much attention until they do something really bad and then they get attention i think that we should absolutely take them seriously when they make threats oh yes yes we should take them seriously so we should listen to them <laughs> Threats from the group hang over the residents of Richmond, Saskatchewan. It is most unsettling for those who have received so-called cease and desist orders like Roland Davis. I wish I knew why I got... I love it how they are sending them cease and desist orders. Like, they're expected to follow the laws of the land or whatever. It's just such a joke, man. Got the death threat? I was like, okay, so why am I on this list? Like, what have I done? 
Is it fearful? It's still fearful because we don't know what they're going to do. They're unpredictable. You know, she says not one but two bullets right here in the head. And, you know, she even does that on her telegram. These are threats she makes. Yeah, it's scary. Very scary, honestly. Makes online. Yes, it is. It's how do you live with that on a daily basis? Back in October 2023, the RCMP met with residents to hear their concerns. Uh, we have supplemental resources here to provide for the safety and security of the community <coughs> of Rich Mountain. So give us the space and give us the time to, to manage the concerns. That's Not everyone was convinced. I'm sure that there was a supporter of Romana Dedulo at that meeting. Hence, no police were doing enough. You're not guaranteeing our safety at all. Police set up a mobile. I mean, they're limited in what they can do. People have rights. You know, um, Ramana Didulo has the right to be at this school if she wants, and there's nothing anyone can do. But your right to swing your fist ends at the tip of my nose. You can swing it anywhere you want, except for right here. That's the idea behind modern human rights that's the idea uh that's the 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 concept upon which the un declaration of human rights were built and upon which the u.s declaration of human rights were built it's all about people respecting others rights your rights and where my rights begin basically <clears throat> And Romana Didulo has a right to stay in that school because the owner gave her permission to. As far as everything else that she's doing, it's all intimidation. And it's, you know, in my opinion, it's violating the people's rights to safety. I don't think the United States guarantees a, a right to a, a feeling of safety. But the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights does have a line in there about safety and feeling safe. And in my opinion, I, I feel that safety should be like considered a fundamental human right. The feeling of safety, of knowing that you're not going to be like killed or hurt or whatever uh, at any given moment. I think that should be like one of your fundamental rights. But anyway, and I think that R Romana Didulo is like violating that for everybody in town. So she either needs to stay on her property or stop acting like a fool. In my opinion, stop sending threatening letters, stop recording people, stop acting like an idiot, stop telling people that you're going to do this to them if they don't that or whatever other thing. Stop it. If you want to stay in town. Otherwise, you have to leave. That's the way I would view it from the perspective of somebody who is in favor of human rights. Um, I believe she should be allowed to stay. She just needs to respect others' rights also. That's all. <laughs> our safety at all. Police set up a mobile detachment in town to prepare for the arrival of Didalo supporters and the resulting protest. When we had the town hall meeting with the RCMP, people were frustrated. People would ask some questions like, so with the cease and desist orders, why aren't the cops doing anything? Well, we're investigating. Every yeah, cease and desist orders, she's talking about like, uh, Didulo has sent like a ton of cease and desist orders. And if they aren't respected, quote unquote, if people don't stop vaccinating people the way that they put it, then they're going to you know, do something psychotic. They're going to kill him. They're going to put bullets in their head or something. I mean, that that's what some of this stuff said. It's insane. Every answer they gave was, well, that's still under an investigation. We can't really answer that question. That's not the answer they wanted to hear. We went looking for answers from the RCMP's top cop in Saskatchewan, Rhonda Blackmore. You know that some of the residents got a cease and desist order. Yeah, this next part might actually be a spoiler, this whole thing. I don't know what Bugenhagen's going to look like. 
I'm just I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play this this game until after. What they're saying here is that you will face publicly broadcast executions upon yourselves and undeserved devastation upon your children, grandchildren, and families. And I'm just, ah, she's reading the cease and desist. Just wondering if that's not enough to consider the group dangerous and I think this is an RCMP member and charge them. At this point in time, we have no indication that there's any imminent threat. We would certainly notify the public if there was an imminent threat, but we have no indication of that. So she doesn't believe that the group is going to do something psychotic. She thinks that they're just going to go around, uh, what's the word, um, like filming them and just scaring the bejesus out of them intentionally. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, Didulo actually told them to do something, though, on her telegram, and they, they just p posted pictures of guns. They didn't actually do anything. I'm putting the game on hold for the moment because I'm at spoiler territory, so we're just going to you know, listen to this. Um, it only has like a couple more minutes. It goes back to who made those threats. And if it's not someone from the group, if it's someone online making the threats, then we have to trace that and make sure that we can do that. We have to be able Look, I understand freedom of speech, their rights and all that. Stochastic terrorism is still terrorism, terroristic threats, and it should still be taken seriously in my opinion able to say that that individual is responsible. The burden of proof in a criminal code investigation is very high. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. We have to be able to say that beyond a reasonable doubt, this individual is the person responsible for making. Yep, that's true. Making those threats. Do you feel that it's a hit? And not just that, but that they were likely going to carry them out or that they were going to carry them out. It, to the confidence of the community, if you're not able to act and in some way make them feel safer because they don't feel safe right now it's not like i know that this is this is a, a there's a fine line between cults and free speech where is that line exactly it's hard to it's hard to know i am all for free speech your right to swing your fist anywhere you want is unimpeachable you're allowed to swing your fist anywhere you want and no one can stop you until you swing your fist right here at my nose. You can't do that because now it's not you exercising your right to swing your fist. It's you violating my right to not have my face punched, basically. But where do cults fall on that line? It's complicated. It's complicated because of something called undue influence. Again, something I talk about in my book at length. In fact, in the very first page, I think. Undue influence is basically getting somebody to do something without them being fully aware of the consequences of their actions. For example, a, you know, a kid steals a candy bar at five years old from a store. Do they really fully understand the consequences of their actions? Like, really? No, they don't. And that's why the shop owner usually takes the candy bar when they're discovered and, you know, makes sure that they get a good talking to, or even the shop owner gives them a good talking to somebody. Make sure they understand that this is not okay, this isn't good. By removing information, by kind of taking things away from the scenarios, cult leaders are basically doing that exact thing to the members. I'm sorry. Cult leaders are basically doing that exact thing to the members. They are removing information and um, convincing them to do something that, that they believe is correct. Convincing them that the thing they're doing is the right thing to do. Undue influence. Which is why I don't think that cult members are fully to blame, or in, in many cases to blame at all, for the things that they do. The cult leaders are to blame, like Charles Manson. He convinced nine people, I think, to kill, who was it, Roman Polanski's wife and kid or something like that. I don't believe that Charles Manson put a finger on anybody, but he went to jail, and, and it was right that he did. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Charles Manson interviews, but I, I cleaned one up the best that I could. This is 30 seconds. He was asked, who are you? Like, what Like, what are you all about? This is after he had already been in jail for a while 
for encouraging nine people to kill somebody. He didn't do anything but act as a cult leader. That's it. And he went to jail for it. You still have no idea what you're about. Tell me in a sentence who you are. Tell me in a sentence who you are. I'm a tramp, a bum, a hobo. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. And a straight razor if you get too close to me. And I'm a straight razor if you get too close. Charles Manson. Why is it that we can put this guy in jail? He very much needed to be there. Obviously. He didn't directly do anything. Charles Manson didn't. Why can we put him in jail, but not Romana Didulo? Look, if you look closely, maybe I can zoom in. I mean, it's too fuzzy, but I, he carved a swastika into his forehead. He was out of his mind, dude. This guy needed to be in jail. And you know who else needs to be in jail? For telling her followers to pick up arms against the government and telling people that she was going to put two bullets in their head for every person that picked up a needle to give an, a, you know, a, a vaccine, a COVID vaccine to somebody. She's going to put two bullets in their head. So every nurse out there better be careful. She should be in jail for these things, right? How is she not in jail for this? But she's walking along. This is Romana Didulo. She's walking with people on each side of her holding flags. They're holding flags of the queen of the Kingdom of Canada or whatever, right? And as they walk by, if you notice, they they pan the camera over to this building to show purple. There's purple in the building. And in her mind, that's a sign that, you know, this building stands with her or whatever. Oh yeah, got it. She told them to get quiet. like get a picture of it or whatever so i think it was like some i don't know what happened here there's some the news was here for some reason i don't think it was a disaster this is where they were right here there they are queen your majesty, your majesty. are you hearing this are you hearing what what they're saying right now this is where they were right here there they are queen your majesty your majesty to the left she said, Queen, your majesty, your majesty to the left. How cringy can it possibly get? I, I like the cringe is so intense. I want to vomit. She needs mental help. This woman does. She needs mental help. Yes, I'm Queen Romana of Canada. How are you? How do I nice to meet you. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. How do I address you, Your Majesty? I'm well. I'm well. How are you? Hi, Mike. I do nice apologize. That's all right. That's all right. No need to apologize. Are you? Are you willing to go and interview with the right Queen of Canada? Now. We're done for the day. But uh -huh. we have another crew that's replacing us right here, uh -huh. okay. and they might use that stuff. How's that? Uh, definitely, yes. And they're too. Yeah. They're just my replacement. We're, we're just white, we're tired, we haven't eaten, and we're cold, and we're going to get back to the hotel. All right, provide. So they, they finished, you know, their interviews for the day, and now they're going to go home. Oh, this is painful. And we're cold, and we're going to get back to the hotel. All right, provide me your... Uh, their contact information. Oh, he's right here, Michael. And his reporter and producer are around somewhere. So they'll be here shortly. There's a reporter around somewhere, so go find him, I think is what they said. She just said his name, Michael, because she was told his name by the last guy. He said, this is Michael, the cameraman. And there's a reporter that'll be here soon or that is here somewhere or something like that. 
So she says, Michael, I'm Queen Romana of Canada. Michael, I'm Queen Romana of Canada. How are you? Please. Okay, ready to meet you. How did you know my name? How did you know my name? Well, the the guy from like 30 seconds ago just told her his name. But of course. Oh. I have my uh, details. Uh oh. Yes? Some guy just told her the name. Are you kidding me? And she's using this as like some kind of a like what like a boost an ego boost like oh i know everything i know everything and everybody how are you please okay. ready to meet you how did you know my name but of course oh. i have my uh, details uh oh yes so michael i came here specifically looking for you Why? and your team Why? because i would like the entire country and the whole world to know but it means that canada now has a new queen I came here looking specifically for you and your team to tell the whole world that Canada now has a new queen. How cringe is this? Oh, are you, are you ready to do an interview? Are you ready to do an interview? No, I'm not great. So, camera tech, I don't know. Okay, no worries. No, no, no. I'm just your producer. Producer is back in the hotel. Uh huh. Like, they all closed up for the day. Where's the producer? He's back at the hotel. I'm just a camera tech. Uh, is this card? Yes. I, I, I do not have this card. He's not a reporter. Uh -huh. he's, uh, he's just setting up. The okay, reporter's so going to be here a little bit later. All right. Well, just let, let, let uh, him set up, and then we can uh, uh, get somebody to talk to you. Is this card, if you guys have any? Don't tell me Fox News doesn't get any of these cards. I have some somewhere. But they're, they're in my, 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 my messy office. Oh, you're in the office. Where's your office? Oh, he's from Northern Virginia. The opportunity you guys have to bring the story that Canada has a new queen. This is the first opportunity you guys have to break a story that Canada has a new queen. This is so cringy and sad, dude. Is this not mental illness? Is this not worthy of a mental health check? You know, Ronald Reagan famously closed like a bunch of. Uh, like mental health institutions in the 80s, we need to reopen those. We need to give this woman a mental health check, honestly. Like, this is, this is too much. How is this any different from Charles Manson and what he was up to? Seriously. She never did get their business card. Not that we've washed our hands of the situation or that we're not going to um, take any follow-up investigation. But that's how they feel. Uh, and I understand. You know, it's certainly concerning, especially uh, for a small town. But um, we're certainly there. We're monitoring the situation. And she does not look happy to be in that seat. And making sure that if there is any indication of criminal activity, that we will be there and we will investigate that thoroughly. So it's not clear who sent these? At this point in time, that's part of our investigation. <sighs> I'm sure that it was Romana Didulo who sent the cease and desists to the mayor and the everybody else. Or it was somebody in her name, part of her compound or whatever. It was her official group or whatever. I don't care who sent it. They put all the people in jail, didn't they, who... It, this is why the RICO Act exists. Of course, that's an American thing. It's not like a, uh, a Canadian thing. RICO was, in, was created with the intent to be able to take out everybody all the way up the line. Somebody is told to murder somebody else, to take out a hit on somebody. The guy that pulled the trigger, the guy that hired, that paid the person, the guy that asked the person to hire the person... The guy all the way to the very top who nodded his head in the back of a bakery. I'm describing a real situation, Ferrara's Bakery in Little Italy in uh, Manhattan. The guy who nodded his head in the ba back of the bakery to approve the hit. Everybody all the way up the chain gets arrested. Like uh, 15 people for one murder. That's what the RICO Act was intended to do. Because organized crime had found loopholes in the system where there'd be one fall guy at most or they'd get like three people and there'd be reasonable doubt because it could have been any of those three people and if you don't have 
beyond reasonable doubt in a courtroom, you don't have a case. You know, mobs and gangs and everything, they've, they've found these loopholes and they've exploited them for years. So the RICO Act exists. Again, this is Canada. I don't know what Canada has. I don't know if they have an equivalent or what, but something needs to be done for real. I don't give a shit. Arrest everybody. Start arresting from the top. Arrest Romana Didulo and her little um, group of people uh, for sending these letters. And if the letters continue to come, then arrest the next little level of people down. And if they continue to come, arrest the next little level. This is exactly what happened with Charles Manson. Nine people killed some some kid and some woman, I think. Charles Manson didn't lay a finger on anybody, and they arrested every single one of them. Why can't we do something like that with real genuine cult leaders and members who are genuine dangers to society, honestly? The RCMP says they can't make any arrests because they don't know who made the threats. Like, I don't care who made the threat. Arrest Romana Didulo. It was done in her name with her approval. And she didn't denounce it. She didn't tell people stop doing that. She said, yes, I stand behind it. But W5 did find out who sent at least one of the threatening emails. Remember Mary? She saw one of those letters posted online. It was posted by a man by the name of, and it was my dad's name. What was that? Oh my God, dude, her dad sent the letter. Like? My heart just sank, my stomach dropped. I felt like I was gonna throw up. I couldn't he, believe- Her dad shouldn't be the one in, well, he should be in jail, but he shouldn't be like the target of the investigation. Why isn't Romana Didulo being targeted here? I don't understand. Like Charles Manson. Yeah, okay, get the guys that pulled the trigger or whatever. Get Charles Manson too. Are you kidding? Believe it. I couldn't believe he had gone that far and done something like that. I feel ashamed that somebody that I love and care about would threaten that to somebody and make people feel scared and worried for their lives that something might happen to them in their own home, in their own community. Mary says the Calgary Police Service did meet with her father, but only cautioned him to not do it again. This is stupid, dude. I'm sorry, man. We need to be tougher on cults, cult members, and cult leaders. We need to. We cannot let this shit happen. Scientology does the same thing. They literally went around and they threatened people. Scientology threatens people. Anybody who's critical of them. They haven't... I mean, I haven't hit the radar yet, I guess. I'm not... I haven't been fair-gamed yet. But you know who has been fair-gamed by Scientology? By the way, JASA, doing some initial research, Canada doesn't have a RICO Act equivalent. Most recent source was August 18th, 2023. Yeah, I didn't think so, unfortunately, but they need one or something. Something needs to be done. Check this out. Let's just look. Um, let's see. I'm just going to Google who is Leah. No, yeah, Leah Remini. Who is Leah Remini? Now, the very, very, very top is just her celebrity status, just information about her, her Wikipedia page. And now the very next one after her Wikipedia, we have Leah Remini, the facts, Leah Remini, the facts dot org. And we've got like pictures of her that are like um, really negative i don't know they just look really bad like propagandistic images that are designed to look really bad she's fair games they cr created a whole website dedicated to trashing her they even got her family members to get on film and talk about how evil she is and they paid who knows how much money god how much does it cost to get this to the very top of the search rankings for a celebrity. Tens of thousands of dollars per month. Who is Leah Remini? And they're at the very top of the search rankings. I knew people who did, who did search engine optimization, SEO. Sat next to the guy. When I was a software engineer, dude did SEO for a lot of our clients. And that's like all he did all day, every day. And I sat there and I maintained the servers for him and stuff. And I know what goes into it. Straight up. 
I know what he was paid. I know what the company was paid. Tens of thousands of dollars minimum went into getting her to getting this page put up to the very top of the search rankings. You can do this for any of Scientology's enemies. Who is Chris Shelton? He's an enemy of Scientology also. Uh, within, let's see. So we've got one, two, three, four like search results down. Four search results down. And we've got like a list of... You know, this website, a list of the evil things that he supposedly did. I mean, it's all fabricated nonsense. There's no reason to believe any of it's true. No, like, not one single word on any of these websites. They get his family members to, to talk bad about him and the whole nine. Scientology goes after people that they don't like. They fair game them. It's really disturbing. Really disturbing. The United States government should have some way to go all the way to the top and take down the entire organization. You know, Scientology as an organization from the very top framed a woman in a uh, in an operation they called Operation Lovely and Operation... Uh, what was it? Operation Freakout was another one. There's a book written by Tony Ortega called um, The Unbreakable Miss Lovely or something like that. All, all about like how this happened. This reporter was writing about Scientology and they framed her for murder. And they were they almost got her put away for like 15 years. Until the whole thing was like the lid was blown off all of it. And she had this best friend who was like helping her through it taking care of her dog and she's like depressed and she had this friend for like years and she's just like he he moved in to help her because she was practically just dying from like she wouldn't eat she wouldn't drink she's just burned you know and he was a Scientology spy that guy was who went to jail for that Everybody who touched that project anywhere along the line or even knew about it should have gone to jail. Everybody. I think like two or three people went to jail for attempting to frame somebody for murder and almost succeeding. For sending a letter to embassies in the United States uh, threatening to bomb them in her name. And they got her fingerprint by getting her to touch a clipboard. out, They had some guy walking around outside her apartment asking if she would sign like a, a petition for something that they knew that she stood for. She said, sure, I'll sign. And then realized she touched it. They got her fingerprint and they lifted it with tape and put it on bomb threats sent to embassies. I'm not even joking. That's the kind of shit that these people do. Operation Snow White is crazy too. Oh, oh, absolutely. The biggest infiltration of the U.S. government, I think, ever. They, uh, Scientology broke into U.S. government buildings across not just the U.S., but across the world, like embassies and everything, and destroyed any files related to Scientology. Anybody who knew about it anywhere along the line, or proves of it even, should face consequences for that how did we get charles manson in jail how did we get even a couple of scientologists in jail how did we get mobsters put in jail like uh teflon don that's a real mobster the the leader of the five families how did we get them the rico act and they needed to be in jail for people's safety they were you know, running an organized crime unit here. Why is Romana Didulo allowed to continue doing what she's doing? It's unacceptable. I don't care who wrote the letter. She should be the one in jail and the person who wrote the letter. Do you think he should have been arrested? I don't know. I oh, are you kidding me?
wrestle with that one. My dad is absolutely a financial threat to himself, a financial threat to my mom. If he's not going to physically carry out acts of threat, he's certainly emotionally and mentally threatening people by sending these letters. W5 emailed the RCMP to ask why Mary's dad wasn't charged. Their answer, to preserve investigational integrity, we are unable to provide information on our investigational steps or evidence. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. Great. Awesome. It's gathered. As for Romana Didolo, we asked several times for an interview, but never received a response. It's like a compound. It is a compound. It's a cult compound with fences and guards and the whole nine. Do you think it's easy to leave that place, I wonder? This came as little surprise since Didolo has never agreed to an interview with mainstream media. But that didn't stop us from trying to find her. It wasn't easy because her entourage kept moving around. Days before we arrived, the group left the school compound and moved to a farm just outside of town. W they moved to a farm outside town? Yeah, I thought they left the school. New Five producer Chad Derrick and I headed there. You know, if they had just, like, stayed in the school and not harassed anybody, if they had just done their thing, if they hadn't, like, planned to, like, you know videotape anybody at the store or threaten people send these cease and desists and all that then done any of that stuff nobody would have cared yeah i'd go right up right up to there i see the there we go that's the property yeah we could pop out here and have a look the group's vehicles are tucked out of sight and well beyond a perimeter fence you know there are some groups that are um, built upon violence. They're built upon the idea that they need violence to accomplish their goals or that they're, you know, I don't know, they encourage kind of sociopathy or psychopathy. They encourage people to suppress emotions and things like that. That's not this group. They exploit people's emotions. They don't want to suppress them. They want to exploit them. So they encourage people to get like really emotional over what they're seeing. Like, oh, they're mistreating children and we have to do something to help the children, you know? For that reason, I would say that these people probably are not a threat to the outside world to the degree that a cult that tries to suppress emotion would be. Like Scientology tries to suppress emotion. They don't try to get people to realize, oh, oh, my God, the children are being so mistreated, you know. So these people are less threatening to me than Scientology is, but they're a more immediate threat because they're going from town to town, like messing with people. How are you? But within minutes, a truck from the compound arrives. I can't tell if you're saying anything. The phone's in front of your face. We're from W5, we just want to talk to Romana or we want to talk to you. Do you want to come and talk to us? Will Romana come and talk to us? We get no answers before the driver speeds off. Dude, is he just like driving through his, um, his farmland? It looks like they farmed that and they laid down seed and stuff. Is he just like, or is this land barren? I can't tell. We visited the Richmond School the next day. It appeared that work was being done. How are you? Is Ravenna around if you want to talk to us? Once again, we asked Didolo's followers if she would speak to us. We're from this thing with uh, filming other people like this, it's an intimidation technique. And they did this. Uh, Scientology does the same thing. They do the exact same thing. They'll even bug people's houses and stuff. They're famous for having done that in the past. W5, does she have anything to say to the people of Richmond? We never did hear from Romana Didolo. She and her group braved the cold Saskatchewan winter, live streaming every night from the school, leaving Richmond residents like Roland Davis wondering what lies ahead. They closed the uh, playground next to the school because, you know, this is where kids used to play.
because they were worried about what would happen if people were going to come up and talk to the kids or try to kidnap them or what. They had no idea. I would have never dreamed I would have a cult living in my backyard. This can't be happening. Like it's, I want to wake up from the dream sometimes and say, okay, this, they're gone. Let's just, you know, go back to normal. It doesn't happen because they're here. They're real. Disturbing stuff, man. Disturbing stuff. Got to feel for these people. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, really sad.